Welcome everyone to a casted game for Age of Empires 4 and today spawning on the west side of the map playing in red we've got Worm Retold also known as Beastie QT playing as the Byzantines and battling out against them in the southeast in blue it's Corvinus 1 playing as the Abbasid Dynasty welcome everyone to Dry Arabia now this matchup is going to be an incredible one. Two civilizations which are hailed as some of the strongest ones in Age of Empires 4. And actually, as it happens, whilst they're both, you know, strong for their different reasons, this particular matchup has an insanely skewed win rate. One of the civilizations just absolutely trounces on the others in pretty much all skill levels. I'm not going to put any spoilers, of course the title and thumbnail suggestive of some things, but I'm not going to tell you, so if you already know, you know, but to be fair, you've got to be a bit of a stats whiz if you do know. We'll talk about it near the end of the game, but I'm pretty excited because, again, as we say, the, the odds are stacked against one of the players, but it's difficult to tell at times because these two civilizations are held to be pretty strong. The question is, well, have people kind of got the wrong end of the stick? That's what we'll discover today. That's what we'll explore. What we'll find out is exactly how these two players, well, face up this match. Now, the Byzantines, incredibly powerful because of the olive oil. They get the olive groves, they get the uh, olive oil from the berries, especially choosing the Grand Winery as a landmark, which is commonly chosen. You get an extra 60% olive oil from the olive groves and, and the berries. So picking that up is incredibly nice. You get a lot of mercenary units because of it. That's what the olive oil you know, can be spent on. So a lot of military. And when you think about civilizations and how they kind of operate, you have some civilizations that typically focus on the feudal age, some that focus a bit more on getting to the castle age. It's not often that you get civilizations that do both. Well, guess what? The Byzantines can actually achieve you know, both at a really good similar timing. And the reason why is because, of course, you're going to gather berries, you're going to gather food from olive groves anyway, and you get units for it. So it really helps you out getting military units. You can be aggressive with those. You can just defend yourself to get to the castle age. So not only do you make units, you also get to the castle age at a very good timing. Of course, the cistern plays a big role in that as well. You get the extra 10% gather rate on the villagers boosted up by this, just at water level one as well, which you can increase. You make more cisterns, connect them up via aqueducts, and that gather rate of the villagers does increase. That's a lot about the Byzantines, of course, but over the way, on Dry Arabia, we've got the Abbasid Dynasty. A civilization that actually is able to boom very heavily, get lots of villagers very cheaply because of the fresh foodstuffs technology, reduces the cost of villagers by 35%. Now, because of that, this civilization typically does make multiple town centers, but something you may have already noticed is that instead of going for the e economic wing, and going for the Fertile Crescent upgrade, which would reduce the cost of economic buildings and houses by a significant amount. Well, in fact, Corvinus is actually opting for the military wing. He's going to be getting two free spearmen and two free archers as he does age up. Now, the reason why this is so significant is actually in the most recent meta, really. The Abbasids typically like to get to second town centers, which they may still even do anyway. But they usually look to go for the eco wing. Corvinus, though splitting up, changing things up a little bit, and maybe he's adapting to the matchup. Because the Byzantines are also a civilization, if left to their own devices, can really ex kind of eke out a lead and extend it very quickly. And a lot of it comes down to the fact that they get a lot of olive oil really quickly, and they, you know, look at this, he's just going to plonk down another system and get the water level up. Now, the military wing, with these units heading across the field, might actually look to challenge that somewhat. So pretty excited to see what Corvinus is able to achieve here, and how much damage he can do. Around the back on the berries, getting the uh, food that he would like to uh, get nice and quickly. And the good thing about the bastards is, of course, being on berries, it means that he can uh, really make use of the sheep later on in the game in case he's pushed by the Byzantines, which I you know, wouldn't be surprised if it happens, because Byzantines, as we said, can get units very quickly. And of course, just spending the olive oil in order to do so. In fact, there is the mercenary house. I'm kind of curious to see what um, contract is going to go for. Now, the Abbasids can typically get a lot of archers, especially in the, um, the Fuel Age, scaling up to the Castle Age. They get composite bows in the Castle Age to increase the attack rate of their archers. And so we potentially could see the Javelin throws coming out for the Byzantines, 
Maybe Keshex is always an option, maybe, but going up against camels later on is a bit of a problem. Longbows, it's a possibility. Either way, Corvinus going to start. I mean, he might. No, he's not going to get a villager kill out of this, but it's going to be causing a bit of harassment. And, and the bigger thing is he's denying the berries. He's denying the olive oil. And that really hampers the war machine for the Byzantines. He's not going to be able to afford too many longbow too quickly from the mercenary house. I say longbow. It could be, it could be, you know, could be a different contract actually as it happens. Uh, no uh, indication exactly what it will be at the moment. And he's using the spearman to torch down the aqueduct. He's actually going to be taking that down. And um, it makes a lot of sense to go for the aqueduct because what it does is it, it's only got 600 HP, right? So he's got more of a chance to actually destroy that as opposed to the cistern with more than double the HP. So we uh, maximized the usage of the spearman, made sure he actually did some lasting damage. On the mercenary house, we're going to have to get a mark here. This is problematic. He's kind of struggling for food right now, going over to sheep. But he's not being able to take advantage of the berries and the olive oil. And he might even get the system, which is pretty huge if he does. Now behind all of this, all this aggression, look at this. Corvinus has added in his second town center. Go over the berries very nice and safely. So he's getting his economy rocking and rolling very nicely. Definitely a different style for the Abbasids, but, I mean, could this be the way forward in this matchup? We'll have to see, of course, a long game ahead of us, most likely. We shall see exactly how this one pans out. As now we see a bit of an early olive grove transition, which is not ideal, actually, as it happens. Because, you know, the, the Byzantines, they want to be on the berries. They, they want to get these berries, the olive oil from that, the food, free food off the map. But a handful of units has denied all of that. At least temporarily. Now, it is on flames. Now, he does have villagers coming out to repair, setting a couple of the Limitani. And he should be able to get the repairs here, Beastie. He might suffer some losses, though. These archers are focusing on the villagers now. So whilst the repairs are out, he might lose a villager. No, he gets away with it there, Beastie. And he did lose one of the spearmen. Although he's adding in more archers behind this, Corvinus. So he's really pumping out units. As you can see, archer ranges up. Barracks about to be put down as well. As we see the javelin throwers coming out now for the Byzantines. Now he's kept this alive. The sister, unfortunately, is going to lose that. Uh, or maybe not. He's, yeah, he probably will lose a scout in the end. We shall see if Courtney. Yeah, unfortunately, that looks like that one's going to go down. Down he goes. And he's going to get a blacksmith now. So, you know, BC's been able to hold. I mean, there was nothing really to hold against. There's not too many units. But what, what it really is, is that he now can go to berries. But it's done a lot of damage. It does a lot more than you can think. Uh, you may think at first glance. Because not having the olive oils means that he's only, uh, only just now been able to get the, uh, the javelin throwers out. And he's had to have uh, a bit more of an olive growth transition, which he maybe didn't want as much as early as he has had to go for today. But either way, the early damage has been done, and Corbin is now behind all this. The second town center has already got the village lead by about four. And, uh, but of course, the Byzantines, what you have to be very wary about is their propensity. Once they do get onto the berries, as they have now, they are going to start pumping out units quick time. And so it's only a matter of time before the Byzantines are staring down the barrel of the Abbasid dynasty base and looking put, you know, to put a lot of damage in. Especially with the Greek fire from the Kyrie Siphon. We shall see how quickly Beastie can mount a response. Now, because of the fact that the Byzantines do both feudal age in terms of making units and also edging towards the castle age so well, because they can do so, you know, both of them, we always expect to see some feudal age aggression from the Byzantines. It's kind of, you kind of expect to see it because they can do both. And then we'll slowly get to the castle age. The question for Corvinus and the Abbasids is how much does he commit to the feudal age or does he go to the castle age relatively soon now there's two things to bear in mind when you're stuck in an age or thinking about staying in an age to extend it you have to think about well what advantages does it give you are you extending your eco lead over your opponent or is your opponent actually getting the better of you in terms of their economy if your opponent's getting the better of you in terms of their economy comparatively then maybe it's best to go to the the castle age and so the fact that the Byzantines can increase their gather rate actually somewhat compensates for the second town center play that the Abbasids have gotten. It's a bit of a difficult one because there's lots of factors in play. Obviously the extra villages from the second town center from the Abbasids which are cheaper. But the Byzantines can make a lot of units because of the olive oil. And olive grove transitions at this point are pretty, pretty good. They get you know, both food and olive oil. And so you know, it's quite an efficient economy. So it's difficult to tell really which one has the strongest economy. I mean, over time, of course, extra villages will start to make a big, big difference. It's kind of curious. I guess it depends on how much damage the Byzantines can actually end up doing. But as it happens, you know, Corbinus is actually keeping up on the military number. 
He's now going on to Olive Oil a bit further forward and he's got the army to protect it, most likely. Although, with some really important upgrades coming in for both players, we could see an engagement soon. Steel Dare about to be on the way, Iron and Mesh already in there for Corvinus. For Beastie right. side of things, he's already got both of those and he's also got now the, uh, the first melee armor upgrade as well, which could come in handy against that number of horsemen. I love this play by BC. He's actually getting border settlements as the upgrade. He's already got it for the houses. It gives him a lot of vision. Uh, certainly an early wa warning mechanism. But now this scout for BC has spotted this number of villages on gold for Corvina. So clearly he's going to see it at Castle Age. And look at this. The immediate response there for BC to say, Hey, look, if you're going Castle Age, I'm going to try and make you pay for it. You're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to work hard. And behind that, I'll probably get the Castle Age pretty soon myself anyway. There is the economic wing now being chosen here for Corvinus. Interesting timing on this, actually, as it happens, rather than go for the culture wing. I guess it helps in terms of if he wants to, um, I mean, I believe, actually, this works on farms, right? So it's actually a very good time for the economic wing to come on in, because cheaper farms for the ambassadors could come in handy. He will start to run out of food in terms of berries on the map, and so he will need a farm in transition, and uh, what a way to do it with cheaper farms. It's going to make things a lot smoother. You know, hard farming transitions with paying the full cost of farms, it can really limit the amount of units you can make. And so, you know, Corvinus obviously counteracting that with the cheaper farms. It's definitely going to be useful. As we see an engagement limit and I going forward, attacking heavily. Does deploy the shield wall, which means they take reduced damage from ranged units. Spearmen in there for the bastards. And, uh, I mean, this is a bit of a rough one. I mean, the horsemen can't really engage in this scenario. But in terms of damage output, it's really the javelin throwers versus the archers. Spearmen getting some good damage output on the, uh, the limit and I. But these horsemen have to be careful. They do not want to engage really because that limit and I will absolutely chew through them. It looks overall though the defender's advantage working out for the Abbasids and he's taken out most of the limit and I despite the shield wall ability. And I mean ultimately the hardened spearmen are getting a lot of value here. He will lose most of the horsemen but eventually Byzantines have to head back and this is a really good hold. This is a very important hold actually. The Byzantines not being able to do damage at this scenario is super important because now Corvinus he's going to be up to the castle age. He could potentially pick up those relics, and more importantly, he's going to have, have heavily armoured units. And so really in this scenario, because of the early military wing play, he's done some damage, he's really slowed down the Byzantine war machine. I mean, ultimately, Beast just didn't have enough units. And a lot of that's come down to the early harassment. The lack of units now means that Corvinus has been able to hold, he's got to the castle edge, and might even be able to push out. And bear in mind, he's got a stronger economy, which continues to grow. The question is for Beastie now. As he is going up to the next stage with the Golden Horn Tower. He's got a lot on his mind, a lot to, to sort out. He's got to be able to think about what his enemy is going to go for, find the right counters, think about picking up the relics to contest those, and make sure that uh, he has that Olive Grove transition, which is actually working pretty well for him. Might need a bit more as time goes on, but certainly make sure that he survives any oncoming push, but also picking up those relics. It's going to be important here for Beastie. He also has to think about, well, how does he catch up with his enemy's uh, economy? Does he add in a second down to himself? It's quite possible. I think the Byzantines are one of several civilizations, like the Japanese, the Ayyubids, that can often add in a second town center. They're more prone to adding in second town centers in the castle age. But it's usually because they're up to the castle age first and earlier. They usually add a village to deficit because of it, but they pick up relics and... Uh, yeah, it's kind of a weird situation in this match. Because of the military wing opening for the Abbasids, them getting to the castle age with a double town centre play is very unusual. You expect to see the Byzantines doing some damage, getting to the castle age first themselves, add a village of deficit, granted, but then they usually, because they've got to the castle age faster, pick up the relics and then add in a second town centre themselves to catch up, or at least keep up with the village production. But it's kind of turned on its head a little bit. It's a really interesting... Uh, chain of events from the early miniature wing play here from Corvinus. He's done a lot of um, has, has delayed things heavily. Looks like he's going to go for the Gulams and the Lancers. So potentially expecting to see crossbows on the menu for the Byzantines. In fact, does he even have archer rangers? This is a bit tricky, right? Because he's actually got a lot of barracks, which means he could be going for Vringen Guards and Limitani potentially. But I mean, uh, you know, Limitani won't be able to hold up too well to the to the Gulam. Maybe Varingan Guards can hold on somewhat, but the uh, infrastructure is a little bit awkward here for Beastie. There is the Archrange. Now the crossbows are being queued up, but 
it's a bit rough, right? Because it's got four barracks. Imagine it was, I don't know, two barracks and two archery rangers. It would be a whole different story. Or even that, even like three barracks and two archery rangers. You know, pretty solid. As it happens, though, things are a little bit dicey. At this point, the javelin throws don't necessarily get too much value. Going up against the uh, the Gulams and the uh, the Lancer that was there. But it's certainly interesting opening, and as we head into almost the 16-minute mark, we need to think about relics. Beastie is starting to focus on that, bringing, bringing one back here as we speak. I wonder if the, uh, the the ambassadors are doing the same. We'll, we'll check on that in just a moment, because it's about to be a bit of an engagement, and, and this is a fight that really the ambassadors should win hands down. The Gulams should rip through the Limit and Iron. Yeah, but this is a weird situation for Beastie, because the army here isn't... It doesn't really feel quite right, right? The limit tonight doesn't count or anything here. Um, bit of a wallow just to buy some time. The javelin throws as well. They don't really count or anything. And the Gulam should take care of both of these unit types. The big thing for Beastie is getting the crossbow numbers out. But it's only one archery range worth of production, right? So he's going to struggle quite significantly. And this play into Gulams has been really powerful. Might snipe out this uh, monk-wielding relic. Or oh, relic-wielding monk, I should say. It's late for me, guys. Unfortunately, the, uh, well, he's going to ignore it, but he's going to go straight for the wood line, it seems, and get some damage in. Now, bear in mind, he does have important upgrades coming in, wheelbarrow, and also upgrades to veteran horsemen. I love that play, because it makes a lot of sense, right? Because he's expecting to see crossbows. I mean, that's the natural counter here for Beastie. What counters crossbows? It's horsemen. Oh, that's a lot of villagers on that gate he did get the gate up in the end but they're kind of running around circles he will lose a couple of villages but more importantly it's a decent amount of idle time about a fifth of the economy idle in fact probably more than that because i'm not sure if these are these are counted well they are counted but i mean he's bringing home relics though bc that that's to be said so he's kind of bridging the gap a little bit of the village deficit but the village deficit is really starting to climb it's getting very significant again good i'm still running right in the middle of the base He's causing all sorts of havoc, all sorts of mayhem to Gulam pulling the army back. And the best thing about this for the Abbasids is what is allowing to happen most likely is a farming transition. And that is key. There it is. We talked about how earlier, I mean, granted the farms are cheaper now, but even then it's still a transition that requires a lot of resources. It takes the steam out of your war efforts and your army production. So the last thing you want to be doing is you know, facing up against an army at your doorstep. And the way that Corvinus has dealt with that is he's forced the Byzantines to stay at home. And now he gets the uh, the archers, which will be doing well against both the crossbows and the limit and I, although the ringing guards will have something to say about that. It's a very interesting choice, actually. He's gone for veteran archers. I was not expecting that switch, but maybe Corvinus is seeing something that I haven't quite clocked onto just yet. Adding in the mangonel, very nice for him indeed. Now, this is actually on the old patch. I say old, but, you know, it's not that old. Uh, the last patch, I should say, for Season 8. Um, and so the Manganels actually do a lot of damage. Now, we, we'll be kind of interested to see how that pans out in the next season. Um, we'll, 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 I'm sure, obviously, we'll cast plenty of games with that. The Manganel stays alive for now, gets another shot on the Javan Throws. Uh, the, the Archers is an interesting choice, actually. The Javan Throws should counter them pretty well, and he's got Varinga Guards, so I'm not so sure about this fight for Corvinus. It could be a little dicey, but he's focusing on what he can kill with the Archers, and that, that's the crossbow, right? I mean, in the end, it's not a terrible trade, but I th I th you know, obviously I think this is a fight that Beastie should win quite comfortably. Really interesting choice for going for the Archers. Granted, he's got, you know, he does have the upgrade for it, but the composite bow is to increase the attack speed, but it just feels like a bit of a weird decision that I kind of, kind of like the Horseman switch a bit better. Horseman Gulam possibly could have been a nice option. Probably quite heavy on the, uh, the food cost, really, for it. So maybe just, you know, spending... What he has trying to make units so he can survive for a bit longer because the byzantines the war machine look at the miniature numbers now they are starting to climb they're climbing fast he's already picked up three relics and deposited them one more on the way and so despite the uh the bastards getting to the next stage quicker actually they found it a little bit of a struggle and it's a lot of it's come down to the farming transition right not being able to pick up the relics and not being able to produce units not being able to really get map control and look at this now the byzantines looking to deliver a killer blow now bear in mind that second town center has worked really well for, for Corvinus. His economy is incredibly strong. Double the number of villages. And granted, of course, there is water level three, so that does bridge the gap somewhat. There's three relics, two sacred sites on the way. 
as well and and that goes a long way to bridge that gap but it's still a huge gap nonetheless give it another five ten minutes if Corvinus can survive he will be in a really strong position and one way to survive by the way on low unit numbers is with siege at least in season eight in season nine actually i'm not sure that it's actually going to be the saving grace that it has been in the past it's going to go for the double mangonel and actually that'll do well to counter what typically looks to be a relatively heavy infantry focus for the byzantines the ringing guards should be able to tank pretty pretty well but uh, the rest of them might struggle a bit against those mangonel now beastie has captured all three sacred sites it forces the Abbasids to try and get out on the map, but of course, he's got bigger problems at his doorstep that he has to deal with first. There's no doubt about it. Bringer Guard's about to go on the wood line and maybe hack and slash a couple of villagers. We'll have to see. This is proving to be a big, strong push. There's only two Kyra Serpents, so it will take some time for the House of Wisdom to be you know, heavily damaged. Here come the Gulam, the chasing the Bringer Guards, and it's now the time for the Byzantines to apply pressure. Oh, the walls have to go up, right? He will not want these ringing guards in that farming economy. He needs to keep the farming alive. I mean, he's got plenty of food in the bank anyway. It's mostly gold that he's running into problems with as it happens. Oh, one mangonel might be taken apart. Will villagers come out to repair? They're going to go for it. Oh, the, the, the barracks kind of getting in the way in the way, which actually helps him a little bit. He is starting to repair. Uh, this mangonel is a bit at risk, but he's managed to keep them alive, which is the big deal. But around the back, it seems, he's actually managed to keep the farm safe. At least a couple of ringing guards trying to run on top of that, but a lot of gulams there chasing. And you know what? This hold for Corvinus looks like it should be able to work. I mean, of course, there's a lot of units here, but the, the switch again to gulam is a switch that I really like to see. There aren't that many crossbows on the field for Beastie, and so the gulam should be able to overrun. A three Kyra Siphons is a bit of a problem. A couple of units taking those down as we speak. And the Palisade Walls here on the right side were a bit of a clutch play to stop this army moving forward. But it's going to get another Kairos up and down this side as well. Multiple angles of attack, which Corvinus has to be careful about. And here come the Mangonels. Good shot on the retreating army. Now on that wood line, oh, this could be a lot of casualties. Corvinus, he's not spotted it yet. He has now. He loses a couple. Another layer of Palisades. You need to keep this Kairos Siphon out of the farms if you can. Slowly but surely. It feels like Corvinus is buying the time he needs. Desperate to get those palisades. Desperate to keep the bringing guards out. And it looks like he won't because they're going to sneak round in between the house and the palisades in the end. Karasafan should be taken down by the Gurum in the end. But the bigger problem is here. He's having to repair Herr Corvinus. And he's used a lot of villagers in order to do so. Beast, he's killed 35 in total. And there's a lot of army camping out here. This is a problem that Corvinus has to somehow deal with. But look at this. He's broken through a couple of units, picking off some villagers. This is looking a bit dicey. Now, bear in mind, the Byzantines are still on one town centre, but he's killing more villagers and bridging that economic gap. Oh, no. The villagers on gold. He spots this, and Corvinus has got so much gold, but the trouble is his food, right? And, I mean, Beastie's just done such a good job of denying food income. Look at the constant stream of army here. Corvinus, he's got a hold on his hands. He's got to make this work, and he's got a good army, though. There's no doubt about it. Defender's advantage should help him. The two mangonels could come in clutch here. Horsemen diving on the infantry, which is actually quite pretty good. I mean, there's no there's no limit in eye here. That's the key bit of detail. Oh, no, th this could be devastating. Corvinus might lose a lot of villagers. He's not responded to it just yet. He's got a lot to focus on, on the front lines as it happens. Now, the bringing guards, they're a bit tricky, right? Because he's got plenty of good arms to try and, try and you know, basically shield against that. He's got a lot of crossbows behind that, and the Mangonel is getting some good shots other than Javelin throws. I don't think this push actually works as it happens. The repair is coming up. House of Wisdom is really struggling, but if he can get one of the Kairos Serpents down, he should be able to out repair this damage input. And it looks like he will. He's going to get this around now, and eventually, Beastie, he's running out of steam in this push, but up in the. Oh, there's a massacre. All those villagers died in the end, and he's killed 54 villagers in total. Corvinus' economy is arguably actually weaker than Beastie's at the moment. But he has been able to pump out a lot of units to hold the hold the lines. And you know what? These Gulam, they're heading forward. They're looking to do damage. Of course, Sacred Sight Victory is an option. But these are relatively unguarded, unprotected. And of course, Corvinus should be able to build... I mean, he's going to be able to you know, out-train his enemy's village account, right? He's got two town centers after all. Beastie never added in a second of his own. So Beastie's actually holding one relic somewhere. Not entirely sure where, but it seems like he's been holding it for a while. But he's back on the farms, and 
You know, Beastie to Texas is a problem. What gives it away is the market, right? And it's an awkward position. You can tell that Corvin has had to rush it down. And so I'm sure Beastie recognized that. You know, the damage it did earlier, it's obviously causing problems. But that's a lot of food income coming on here. In fact, let's take a look. It's 41 farmers. It's getting about 2,000 food per minute, which, of course, the Byzantines are doing the same. And they're getting olive oil at the same time. So it's pretty, pretty solid. Although, I don't really know about the ut utility of the javelin throwers in this situation. Um... It, it, it kind of theoretically makes a lot of sense because you do sometimes see the bastards go for archers, but I don't know if they really scale too well. Either way, he's not going to go for... I mean, he's still got archers, to be fair, as it happens, strangely enough, despite the threat of the javelin throwers. And he managed to stabilise and rebuilding that House of Wisdom. Second town centred out now here for Beastie, recognising that he couldn't really deliver a killer blow. He doesn't want to fall behind on the village count too much again. Now, a pretty big problem is gold income. Two gold veins, pretty exposed, or this one is going to about to be exposed. It's, it's not really mineable at this point. And look at this, Beastie recognizing that situation. But Gorvanus recognizes it too. He's going to try and get the Palisade Walls. It should work out for him, but these are ranged units here. So he will lose a couple of villages at the very least. Oh, he snuck around the corner with the limits and I, unfortunately. The Palisades will make it difficult to just waltz on in, but he's denying that position and the gold, which Gorvanus is now looking to solidify and deal with. Cracking game of Age of Empires 4, no doubt about it. And as always, I would like to say a very big thank you for everyone who's been supporting the channel, whether it be on Twitch or YouTube, you guys are absolute legends. Hey, look, if you've been enjoying the content, especially this match, or maybe you've watched a couple of my games casted, make sure you are subscribed because I'll be uploading maybe every two days or so, and uh, only the very best games, are, of course, and that means uh, plenty more Age of Empires 4 action on the way. Make sure you hit the notification bell as well, because that's really the most important thing you can do gives you a bit of a ding dong when I do upload a video and uh, speaking about ding dongs I mean he's right at the doorstep here ringing the bell BC trying to get some damage I mean he's got Limitani versus Horseman of course favor the Limitani but there's plenty of archers there added into the mix a couple of ringing guards too and eventually this will be cleared up so BC's a little bit of a attack here not going to achieve too much could maybe two three villages or so maybe four yeah it does seem to be four in the end so it's better than nothing of course Village account relatively even as, as things happen, and I suspect we'll see what. Okay, it's actually, only wood level three for Beastie at the moment. But that is a lot of Gulam. Look at the military numbers now 97. The war machine for the Abbasid dynasty really has come online, and he has managed to survive to a point where actually the Abbasids should be able to move out and do a lot of damage. Maganel's deploy, decent shot off there. I and mean, if you can get on top of the infantry, it will be absolutely huge. A big thing for Beastie is actually having to split up his army to try and get value, right? He's trying to deny the gold, but it means that his forces aren't in one direction and it becomes a problem. Oh no, this is an issue. Look at this. Oh, the crossbows. They're out of position. They're on the front lines when realistically they should be at the back of the base because this is what's happening. The Gunams are going to march on in and it's going to take some time for Beastie to head in this position. He's almost at population capacity as well. So there's no easy way to reinforce. He's got defenders advantage, but there won't be too many units popping out here. His army is stuck on the map. And doesn't have all sorts of uh, particularly good mobility. And the horsemen are here. Oh no, the man is going to take out these javelin throws and the crossbows. That is not a good position to be in for the Byzantines. And his base is over on here. Corvinus, will he be able to beat the odds? The odds are stacked against him. The win rates for the Abbasids versus the Byzantines are absolutely abysmal at pretty much every skill level of Age of Empires 4. And could it be the military wing that seals the deal? He's trying to get a keep here, but this probably won't go up. Oh, those archers. They're going to kill so many villagers. Beastie, he is losing on multiple fronts. Now, he might win this fight eventually, but he won't get that keep up. And in his main base, his economy is idled. This is not good. He's going to be struggling on food. He's got four in the bank, and there it is. Corvinus, he beats all odds, and he does it with an interesting strategy. Not something we see all that often these days. He went for the miniature wing, and it all unraveled from there. Hope you guys enjoyed this casted game. If you did, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Take care. And see you next time.